Yes, Mr. Molesworth. I'd like to make an application for leave to briefly lead evidence from Mr. Michael Hurst in response to some of the evidence that we have heard from the ANZ. Uh, Mr. Hurst has already been provided with a summons to attend, uh, and he, he has indicated he'd like to have the opportunity to provide some additional evidence on a couple of very narrow and discrete issues ad addressed in the evidence from the bank. Well, again, Mr. Molesworth, the question is not time, uh, it's uh, difference uh, and addition. But yes, is Mr. Hurst in the hearing room? Yes, Commissioner. Yes, if Mr. Hurst could be good enough to come forward. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes, call yes. Michael Hurst. <laughs> yes, you'd go into uh, what we're using as the witness box, please, Mr. Hurst. Now, would you prefer to take an oath or make an affirmation? I'd take an oath, thank you. Yes, swear the witness, please. Good afternoon. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. The evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much, Mr. Hurst. Do sit down. Yes, Mr. Molesworth. Thank you, Commissioner. I'll just let Mr. Hurst sit down. Uh, we'll do that in a second, Mr. Hurst. Mr. Hurst, can you please state your full name for the Commission? Uh, it's Michael George Hugel Hurst. And, you're, and you've received a summons to attend here today? Yes, I have. And you have that summons with you here? Yes. I attended that. Exhibit 4.29, the summons to Mr Hurst. Mr Hurst, before you fell into financial hardship in 2011, could you give us a very brief overview of what your farming business was and how long you had been in it for? The Yes, so our family's been um, farming, uh, we were farming for some 30 years, so in beef, uh, sheep trading and and timber production. And can you briefly, again in the interest of time, to summarise when your relationship with Landmark commenced and then when the relationship with ANZ started? Yeah, so um, at, at some point in two, about 2005, our family property went up for, um, went up for auction and we, we um, we needed to try and finance that, and we met manager, and he financed us to 8.2 million unsecured, but we were losing bidder on that property. Thank you, sir. You don't need to uh, refer to relationship managers by name. Throughout your relationship with Landmark, what was your experience with being offered debt? Was Landmark generally supportive when you sought further debt? Yeah, so uh, I think our first experience with the relationship manager followed on and then we we began to do quite well in the forestry market and the, the debt increased with the opportunities that came up and he was very, very supportive. And what was your experience with ANZ? And again, on the same question with regards to being lent more or being offered more. Uh, so... Um, we were a landmark customer. We had a letter in the mail to say that ANZ were purchasing the loan book. Uh, the experience, it said, would not change. Nothing would change. Uh, it would just go on as normal. We'd have the same relationship manager, in which case that was correct. Um, up until, uh, uh, until t early 2011, when um, ANZ took us out to a decent restaurant in our local town and um, said we're a very good business and we want to see more of you and um, basically pumped us up. Can you explain that a little bit more? So they, they seemed to think our business model was quite good um, and we had made some good deals previous in the previous years so they tended to single out those and pretty much said just keep going. When was the last offer to increase your loans made by the bank? So the last offer to increase our loans was on the 2nd of August 2011. And when did you find that your accounts were frozen and you could not withdraw money? We had a ANZ relationship manager come out on the 15th of August and it was then that he said, put the checkbook away. And when, in your mind, were your accounts actually frozen or no longer available for access for you? I believe that the accounts were frozen on the 
24th of, 24th of October, 23rd of August, sorry, 23rd of August. Did the terms of your financing agreement between Landmark and ANZ change? Uh, yes, they did. And that was one of the major points that we have always felt we were very badly done by was that in a meeting on the 24th of October, the regional manager and, the, and our relationship manager hauled us into Launceston to tell us that we were to be sent to asset lending in uh, Melbourne. And the explanation was that ANZ doesn't do business like you do. We do not lend on the thought of, I can't exactly, because I haven't got the document here, but we do not lend on the basis of capital sales. We lend on a solid cash flow basis. And that really blew us away because right up until that point, we had been supported to the hilt and they had groomed us to that point and then they just turned and then we were just smacked to bits. Once you got to the position in late 2011 that you couldn't access funds anymore, were you able to seek advice or external services? So, so the, th the thing is, we, we didn't have any money and, and we, we didn't feel like we should, we weren't asking ANZ for any money at that point because we realised the situation we were in at that point because the valuations had dropped enormously at that point. We, we, we were using a, a, an accountant who put us onto this crowd in Melbourne who in our, in, in our terms, was purely there to sell us up. There was no support whatsoever. But every, everything, in our view, that ANZ wanted, they did. And so, to this day, we, we haven't been, we haven't re remunerated that, that company for what they did. Were you aware of any way you could challenge what the bank were doing? There's no way we could challenge what the bank did. We had no resources, so I was working um, working quite hard. So, so um, I'd managed to get a job um, driving a truck, and my wife was in bed, so it it was tough. So. Um, we really, we really couldn't find any resources to fund a, a, a legal team to challenge what ANZ was doing. And Mr. Steinberg was correct. We were very compliant, okay, right through this process, because originally we had a feeling that it was a way of fault. But of course, as information came forward later on in years, um, that of course changed. So were you, were you provided with any information at all from the bank in relation to review services available or external advice that you might be able to receive? Um, they may, there may have been reference to seek legal advice, but we had no money. There may have been reference to seek a, a, a rural councillor, um, but um, I, don't, I don't remember it. Financial Ombudsman? Uh, 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 I'd never heard of FOS until I came up here. To when were you first offered a mediation or neutral evaluation process? Um, so, 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 so as we went through the process of um, of them picking our carcass to bits, um, a few stories started to emerge um, from the mainland about potential problems in this landmark ANZ takeover business. And we started to engage with a few people. And then on the 8th of September, Mr. Fallot um, 
uh, and a 60 minute story and, and the CEO went up and saw him and, 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 and at, that, at that point I think we, we started to realise that maybe everything wasn't quite right and I'd refused to sign the statutory declaration with Mr Wormald because I asked him previous, probably six months previously to that, he, was, he, he had a lot of pressure on me to sign this stat deck. And I said, Mr Wormald, I will sign it if you've done nothing wrong, OK? And, and he, he would just go all silent on the phone and he would never answer that question. So I would just say, Mr Wormald, I will not be signing that step three declaration until you can guarantee that me that you've done nothing wrong. So I never signed it. And then the story came in 60 minutes. We wrote an email that following morning, me and my good wife, um, and it was outlining most of our grievances. And well, you wouldn't believe it, I had a phone call that week, just, just like that. Until that time, there had been no communication or offer by ANZ in terms of any review of your case? There was not. When did you first see terms of reference for this review, which they then agreed to do? So, so Mr Warnold and a, and, a, and a customer advocate lawyer came down and they sat at our table for, I don't know, two or three hours, never admitted any wrongdoing, um, just basically said, we've done nothing wrong. They went home. We said, you, "Well, you know, come back, come back with something." They went home, and then we got a phone call from Customer Advocacy in October, 2016, 15, 15. She said that we want to do this process with a, a eminent judge, and so an evaluation. It wasn't until. April 2016, we actually got the terms of reference. They looked all right to me, but we, we, ANZ offered $1,000 to get legal advice on that, so we took it to, um, to, we found legal advice, took it to them. They, she said, you just can't sign that, it's ridiculous, it's absolutely ridiculous. I, don't, I can't tell you why, because I haven't got a legal mind but she refused to have us sign it and then there was protracted negotiations until I think January the first, January 2017. What were the risks if you didn't sign the agreement? We had no option but to sign the agreement, make no mistake. And there was no other option to us. When did you finally get a resolution? We got a resolution on uh, February the 28th in 2017. So one year, three months later? That is correct. And what was the experience like for you for that year? Oh, well, um, you see, um, we've been belted to bits for, what, five years previous to that, and apparently they'd done nothing wrong. Um, and then we were on a bit of a high when Mr. Fallot went up and, and we could see that, the, that there were issues. And even then they wouldn't, wouldn't have any culpability at all. But, you know, like so, so we were quite buoyant after that program, as you can imagine. And then, then there was, then the meeting, they just said, well, we've done nothing wrong again. And so we, we do, you know, so we were on this emotional co roller coaster and all the time, you know, you've got to remember everybody, we still had to, we had still had to live. With, we've got four beautiful girls, and and we're dealing with all this stuff. You know, for what is it? Eight years now. Eight years, we've been dealing with this, and um, so it, it was tough. That 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 last that last eighteen months was tough because we we had an emotional high, and then it all got taken away in a way through the protracted negotiations, just to sort out what we're going to talk about. I mean, how hard is it? Tell me, how hard is it to sort about, talk about what we need to talk about? I mean, it was all in black and white. So what, what was the issue? I, I just do not understand. Once you actually attained your, your 
resolution after the evaluation report had been handed down, are you satisfied that the bank played a role in you losing everything? Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Has a bank ever apologised for the misconduct you experienced and that helped bring about your family's ruin? They have never once ever shown any empathy, they have never shown any compassion, and they have never apologised. And where I'm from, where I'm from, if you do something wrong, there's nothing wrong with apologising. But these guys refuse to. Thank you. No further questions. Yes, just before uh, I call on you, Ms Orr, um, Uh, uh, apparently your address is subject to a non-publication direction. You were carefully asked where you lived and you promptly answered that, Mr Hurst. Oh, we've, been very, <laughs> we've been very careful not to reveal where you were living. So, uh, Tasmania is a small place and they probably all know. Everybody anyone. knows everyone. So uh, uh, we oh, had uh, said uh, no disclosure of where you lived, Mr Hurst. The other thing is you mentioned the uh, manager's name. Uh, we'd uh, uh, made a non-publication direction about the manager's name to no, I just, I just raise those matters. Now, Ms Orr. I have no questions, Mr. Yes, Dr Collins. No, no questions, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr Hurst, for coming and uh, telling me what you have. Yes. You may step down and you're excused. Ms Orr. Commissioner, we're moving now to a different case study. I wonder if we might uh, adjourn now and reconvene early. Would it be Come possible to... Come back at to... 1.50? Yes. Would, if that's convenient to the Commissioner. 12.50 and if we resume at 1.50? Very well. Thank you, Commissioner.